people think that money comes from hard work, money comes through how much effort you put into something, money comes through how many degrees you have, and things like that, when money is literally just attracted to it's, it's magnetic. It's attracted to a specific frequency and your frequency is through your beliefs, your thoughts, and your emotions. So I want to kind of stay on this topic of scarcity because I think my money mindset journey was one of learning like where does scarcity show up? Meaning like the feeling that there's not enough or sometimes that I'm not enough. And how do you actually shift that from a mindset of scarcity, seeing lack, to one of abundance. Anything you want to share around that, either your personal experience or what you teach others. Do you want to start us off, Catherine? So I see scarcity. So we have a survival brain and the sole role of this part of our brain, also known as, as a subconscious mind, is literally just to keep us alive. It's the part of us that makes our heart beat and um, our lungs expand when we breathe and digest our food and detox within our bodies. Like, thank God we don't have to actually consciously think about mm -hmm. that because imagine at like three in the morning, you're like, okay, heartbeat now. Okay. Now breathe now digest. It, it would drive you insane. So thank God we have that part of our mind, but that part of our mind is really driven to look out for threats. So it's constantly looking for what's wrong in the world, what's missing, what can come out of a bush and eat you. <laughs> so I, I see so many people fighting this part of themselves and it's such a part of humanity. You know, to think that you would get yourself to a place one day where you would never have thoughts of scarcity or you would never have that voice of doubting yourself or never have limiting beliefs. I mean, that's just a part of humanity. And you as a soul literally chose to incarnate here to have that experience. It's almost like the most limitless part of you decided to come into this more finite human body to experience what it's like to then break out of it. Okay. And so I see that instead of fighting that, just knowing that and honoring that and like realizing that that voice is just looking for some sort of acknowledgement. And instead of fighting it, I really became my ego's like best friend. So whenever it acts up or whenever it tries to keep me from something or sabotages me or tells me some crazy stuff in my head, I just go, Hey, ego. Hello. Oh my God. So nice to see you. Like I, I hear you. I understand yeah. you. I get you. It just wants to be heard. And you would be so amazed by how much you can quiet that voice just by befriending it. And so just knowing that there's nothing wrong with you, that you have thoughts of scarcity or, you know, beliefs of scarcity, it's, it's so adamant in our culture in society, like turn on a movie, turn on the TV, talk to any average person out in the world. And that scarcity mindset runs rampant. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to build up your abundance muscle and how I love to do that and how I started to do that, especially when I had a negative bank account, when I was $25,000 in debt and literally like, I feel crazy for reading these money manifestation books and listening to these people. Like, it sounds like they're selling me some sort of fantasy, but yeah, I'm here for it. And for some reason I believe in it and I want to believe in it. And so I'm just going to go all in on this. And so when I literally didn't have money, what I did is I looked for other examples of abundance in my life. So do I have an abundance of love in my life? And I like to look at love similarly to money in the sense that it's a literal limitless resource. Just think yeah. about how many people you can love in a lifetime. Think about how much love, like I think about the love that I have for my son and it's literally endless. It's infinite. There's so much more. And the more I love him, it doesn't take anything away from loving my husband. It doesn't take anything away from loving my friends, loving my work. There's so much of this energy available. And so just looking for other examples of abundance in your life, um, an abundance of food, an abundance of clothing, an abundance of 
friends. And then expanding, once you kind of like go, okay, wow, I have so much to be grateful for. There actually is so much abundance in my life. What I like to do is I like to go out in the world, and this is something I teach my students, where I just like to think about like how much money is being processed all around me at any given moment, or like how much money exists like within this room. Like think about how everyone's outfits in here cost money, yeah. right? Everyone's shoes, everyone has credit cards in their wallets, like this event costs money, right? There's all kinds of sales being made in the back. Like there's just so much money just being processed. And it's like cool to think about, like I'm in the room of so much money. This is amazing. Yeah. And then you're like, wow, like there's so much, there's infinite amount of it flowing all around me. Like why can't it just come into my bank account too? And it coming into my bank account isn't taking away from your bank account or your bank account or your bank account or anyone's bank account. So just really growing that muscle. And you'll notice that the stronger that muscle gets, the weaker the other voice gets and the weaker the voice of scarcity gets and the weaker that scarcity mindset, you're literally building neural pathways. And the best way to build a neural pathway is through repetition. It's really a boring answer, but you really have to do something and face something and question something and overcome something over and over and over and over again. And eventually you're just going to look back and be like, wow, I believe that before. That's kind of funny. Like, damn, I don't want to recognize that version of myself. And just really stepping into like thinking about the most abundant version of yourself and really picturing her and really defining her and like thinking about what is she focused on, on any given moment? Mm -hmm. What is she thinking about? What does she believe to be true about money? Who is she surrounding herself with? Mm -hmm. Who is she friends with? What kind of content is she consuming? There's so many deep levels that we can go down on. And I get obsessive over this. I'm like, all right, what else is she doing? How does she brush her teeth? Like how does she put on her <laughs> underwear? Like with dollar bills, details like that. <laughs> and so the more that you literally act like that version of you, the more you become that version of you, then you energetically vibrate as that version of you. And a lot of people think that money comes from hard work. Money comes through how much effort you put into something. Money comes through how many degrees you have and things like that. When money is literally just attracted to, it's, it's magnetic. It's attracted to a specific frequency. And your frequency is through your beliefs, your thoughts, and your emotions. And it comes your way through the value that you add in the world, through your creativity, how many lives you impact, and honestly, just believing that you're worthy of it is incredibly magnetic. And that's like a whole nother level to this where you realize that you yeah. add value to the world simply by existing and that's enough for you to make more money. That's power right there. So yeah. all of this is to build that muscle. Mm. And the, the more consistent you are with it, the more committed you are to it, you're just going to notice that little by little, every single day, you're going to grow into this version of you. And one day you're going to look at yourself. You're going to look at your life. You're going to look at your bank account. You're going to look at your business. And it's going to feel like it happens so slowly, but at the same time, it just happens like this. Like it's, it really is so cool. Yeah. It's such a reflection of who we're being, right? You want to add anything to that? That was so that was good. so good. I was like, was no like, notes. Every answer I had, she hit it. And then I was like, yeah. okay, on to the next one. Okay. But on to really, the next one. 